Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and today's video. So the Swedish words of the day, I'm gonna give you two because I couldn't really pick. So the Swedish words of the day is first and foremost, submarine, which is in Swedish, ubåt. Ubåt. And then the second word is alone, which is in Swedish, ensam. Ensam. That is only because Nicholas is actually away today. He is in Stockholm with his work and I need to sleep alone tonight, which I hate. Also, Sigi hates it. He can never sleep if we, as a family, isn't all gathered. So I know that I will be sleeping on the couch tonight because if I don't, he's gonna um, keep me up and whine and look at the door all day. All night. Anyway, so last week I started up my makeup and murder playlist. This is not videos that is gonna come up like every single week because they take a lot of preparation. But then also I do want to thank you for all your lovely words uh, and comments last week. It really made me so happy that I that I kind of decided instantly to go ahead and do another research on a case which I have done today. It's a Swedish and a Danish case. But I do want to do a couple of disclaimers before before we hop into this video because I feel like it's kind of important for me to do so. So first and foremost, I am Swedish, as you can hear probably by my accent. So I might mispronounce certain words or even say the incorrect word um, without me even knowing it. So I do my best, but feel free to comment down below and correct me if you want to. The second disclaimer is that I don't mean any harm by doing this video. This is mainly for educational purposes, but I also wanted to um, just do another disclaimer and mention that there will be some talking about sexual assault in this video. I feel like a lot of killers are actually really are very very driven by their sexual needs. So there will be talk about that, but I won't go into detail and so on. So I am going to do my makeup while talking about this. So let's get started. So this case took place on a Thursday, uh, 2017. It was the 17th, no, it was August 17th. And Kim Val, it's spelled English wall, but pr her pronunciation is Val. So Kim Val was a Swedish journalist and she was going to do a reportage on the Danish inventor Peter Madsen. So as I said, Kim was Swedish and Peter was Danish, but they were in Denmark in doing this reportage. Peter lived in Denmark and Kim had a uh, Danish boyfriend. So she was going to interview him uh, because Peter was actually an inventor. He had invented a lot of things, but this reportage was about the submarine that he had built. This was the biggest submarine ever built by a private person. So it maybe wasn't the biggest one in the entire world, but it was the biggest one that had been built by just like an average person, just like, you know, you and me would do it. It was almost 18 meters long and it weighed around 32.5 tons. But then I also saw that some people said that it weighed 40 tons. I did not take a lot of time trying to figure out which was correct because I didn't really feel like that was necessary or had anything to do with the case, but just know that it was large and it was heavy. And I'll probably go ahead and leave some pictures here in this video, but I won't have any gruesome pictures on anyone who's dead or anything. So the submarine had a name which was Nautilus. So they stepped foot on Nautilus the Thursday, um, August 17th, 2017. This was at seven at nighttime. So the submarine left the Copenhagen Harbor around 7 p.m. So later that same night, Kim's boyfriend started to get worried because she hadn't come home. So he called the police to report her missing. And I feel like a lot of the times people kind of wait or uh, the, the police doesn't act on it very quick. There is just one thing with this investigation that the police, I wouldn't necessarily say that they did wrong, but it's just something that we're gonna discuss later. But overall, the police handled this case very, very well. They acted super quick because Kim's boyfriend actually told them what was going on and that she had been on the submarine with Peter Madsen. 
So they acted really, really quick. And they didn't act quick just because they thought that a crime had occurred. They acted quicker just because of the fact that it was revolving a submarine and they thought, okay, maybe something has happened. Maybe um, they have, they are stuck somewhere. You just don't really know. And that can eventually lead to danger for other people as well that are out on the in the ocean. So early that Friday morning, they started going out searching for them. 14 minutes past 10, they spotted the submarine. So 10 at the morning. And earlier, they had also tried to contact the submarine via radio but without any results. But Peter reported to them via radio that everyone on the submarine was fine and that he was on his way back to shore or to harbor. So 45 minutes later, so this is at 11 o'clock on morning, the submarine suddenly sinks. So there is this private person out in on his private boat and uh, he has to rescue Madsen. He has to... Uh, take him on board on his boat so later on when the police talked to peter because they eventually went to the harbor they asked him where kim was and he was like oh no i dropped her off earlier that day or earlier the previous day at night he just dropped her off nearby a restaurant and then he went out with his submarine again so basically what they do is that they check the cctv cameras because this place where he says that he dropped Kim off has so much CCTV uh, footage or uh, has a lot of cameras so that they like they there's no blind spots like you can see everything and they were like well there's not any submarine here they couldn't spot Kim like he hadn't dropped her off which makes this super suspicious since Peter was an inventor. He usually always talked to media. He always liked to talk to the media and being in the center and he was always very funny when talking to them and he gave them a lot of like um, information and he just loved talking to them. But when the media was there that day, because of obviously the media had heard that there was a submarine that the police were looking for so a lot of peter's friends went out and they were scared that something had happened to nautilus or peter and also there was a lot of media there as i said but when peter passed the media he didn't talk to them he kind of just passed them and then went into the police car and just sat and waited for the police looking down so that was a little bit strange to the people that usually talk to peter because eventually like they get a little bit friendly and they just thought that it was a little bit strange range and they were like getting bad feelings so as i said the police took peter in obviously for questioning and so on and later that same day so this is still the same friday august 18th it is now and they announced that peter was now suspected of murder or manslaughter but the next day they changed the arrest and i need to look at my um papers right here just my notes to see what it says but they changed it to causing others death in particularly aggravating circumstances during the weekend the police investigates the submarine obviously so they had now like brought it up to the harbor and was investigating it mainly because they wanted to see if kim was there but then also like of course they wanted to see if they could find any damning evidence or you know whatever but they were anyway looking at the submarine and they could determine that the submarine hadn't just sunk by accident or that something had gone wrong. It was proven that Peter Madsen had sunk his submarine by himself, which later on when his friends who had worked on this submarine with him was asked, asked about this, they thought that it was so strange because he loved that submarine. He had worked on that for years, like that was his baby. So they were just shocked that something had happened to the submarine or that he had sunk it himself because they knew when the submarine sunk, they were like, no, 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 he did not sink it. Like it was something that happened to it because they knew how much he loved it. But apparently he sunk it himself, which makes him look very, very suspicious. So now we are a week into this investigation, or if you want to call it like a week after Kim's disappearance. 
They are now suspecting that they are looking for a body. They don't believe that Kim is alive. And if you have watched a lot of these cases, like missing persons cases or um, kidnapping cases or stuff like that, basically after a certain amount of time, like after I think it is like 12 or 24 hours, the chance of finding them again or finding them alive are getting smaller and smaller and smaller by the minute. And when seven days has passed, they there aren't a big chance. Like there's a bigger chance that you'll never find them or of course not find them alive. But finding them alive isn't a big chance. Of course it has happened. Look at Natasha Kumpadre, I can never say her name, or JC Lee Dugard or whatever her name is. So of course it can happen, but the chances are not very big. So of course they are searching, they are pulling in people from Sweden, they are pulling in people from Denmark, just trying to find experts um, who can search in the water and can trace them. But I'm not gonna bore you with all of that detail because I don't find it that very interesting to like say that, oh, they pulled in this guy and blah, blah, blah. But basically what happened on August 21st, I know that there's a lot of dates in this, but <laughs> the police announced something that gets the public very, very shocked and also furious. So when they arrested Peter the first time, like when they arrested him, um, the day that they found the submarine, he, Peter, had said that Kim had died on the submarine. And the public was shocked because they were like, why didn't you tell us this before? If you had no have known this for 10 days, like why haven't you said something? Uh, and this is the only thing that I mean that the police did wrong. They didn't do it wrong by my count counters. Like, I don't really care about that uh, because I feel like the police knows what they are doing. The police actually explained this that and said that they want to keep the public interested and they want to keep the media interested. So that's why they kind of just leave information as they go so that the media will still have an interest in this case. But I, I don't know if I believe that. I think that mainly it is because of the fact that they didn't want to say anything to protect their case. That is just an assumption. I don't really know how the police works. I'm obviously not a policeman or a police woman. Um, but I can understand why they did it because as I said, they have their reasons. So maybe they did just wanted to protect their case or something. But now comes the question, what actually happened to Kim during that submarine? These pictures are taken by private persons the day um, they went out. So the day that uh, Kim was going to do her reportage, so like the August 17th. No, did I say August 17th? Fuck. I'm so sorry. I've said August 17th. They actually went out August 10th. So I'm sorry about that. On August 10th, there were these private persons that saw the submarine and took photos. So on the picture right here, you can see K Peter Madsen and Kim Val. And this is the day that they went out. You can see that they are looking out, like they're standing um, basically where you get in and out of the submarine and he says that the hatch that you have to open is very very heavy He says that it weighs around 70 kilos, which is a lot Her Kim was opening that and she was pushing it and then something happened to it and then it kind of knocked her in the head and that was What killed her and then he says that he buried her by sea. And I just want you to think about this a little bit. So if you see the pictures of the submarine right here, you can think about the fact that it sounds, I'm not gonna say that it sounds romantic, but it sounds nicer than it is by burying someone at sea. Like burying someone, we get these pictures in our head. If you have ever been to a funeral, you get these pictures in your head where you think about how a burial should be or how it is. If you think about this, what, he, what that means is that she died on the submarine and he probably panicked. So instead of calling the police on his radio that he had, it's a shocker not to call the police when something like that has happened because maybe if that happened, they could have saved her life. But Peter didn't think like that. He thought, okay, she's dead. I need to bury her. I need to do something kind for the family because of course the family wants her to be buried by sea, right? Anyway, what he did is that he climbed up and then just took her body and threw it into the ocean. That is what buried to sea is like, because it's not like he put on a wetsuit, took her body and like put her into 
the sand or whatever and put some flowers there. Like, no, that is not what happened. But anyway, Peter says that her death was an accident and that he threw her body into the water. So of course they are still searching for Kim's body. And the same day that this gets released, they actually find a torso. They were pretty sure that this was Kim's torso, but they weren't 100% sure. So they don't want to go out to the media and say like, oh, hey, we found Kim's uh, torso. And then doing DNA testing, it's an, it ends up not being hers. So they kind of just said that we found a torso. We are 99% sure that it is, is Kim, but we don't want to confirm it until we have evidence of it being her body. So they do DNA testing on this torso, which ends up proving that it is Kim's body. And I just have so many questions about this, and I do believe that the police had it as well. I mean, if we are supposed to believe Peter Madsen and his story of events that, hey, she got this hatch in her head, so I buried her by sea, then how come a torso is found? And he denies dismembering the body. He just says that, no, it wasn't me. There must have been someone else. So he basically means that, okay, she got the hatch in her head. He buried her by sea. Someone found this body took it out of the water, started to dismembering it, and then put it back in the ocean. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, I know that this is possible, of course, but everything is sort of possible. But I mean, that is such a small chance of that ever happening. So of course the police wasn't buying it. No one was buying his shit, but he's stuck to his story. So since Peter is the main suspect, he's like the only suspect. So they start to look into him and of course they search his belongings, they search his home, and they search his workshop, which is where he built the submarine and where he and his workers or whatever. I'm, I'm not saying that he, uh, that they were his workers, but I do believe that they had this workshop together. In this workshop, they find Peter's computer. And of course they take it in for analyzing and evidence. And when doing that, they find certain things on his hard drive. They find snuff films. And I, I have heard that term before, but I've never really known what it was until I started researching this case. I've only heard like snuff films and I've been like, okay, what the F is that? But it's basically films or, or I guess that you get sexually aroused by it. I don't know if sex is involved, but it is animated films, but then also real films where, um, for instance, there was this one video where a girl walks in, this was animated, she dances a little bit sexy, sits down on a chair, and then a man comes up behind her and slits her throat. I didn't see the slitting her throat part. That's kind of um, shocking. I mean, especially when finding out there that her body was dismembered and finding these snuff films. I mean, as I said, there were real ones and there were fake ones, which means that he had films of women, or I don't know if there were men as well, but I do know that there were women that was murdered on film. Like real murders, not just role-playing, real murders. But yeah, finding these snuff films definitely makes him look even more guilty. But Peter, he's a funny guy, so he claims that Everyone who works in that workshop has access to his computer, which is true, like they had. But what are the chances of some of them watching these movies and downloading them to his computer? It's just not really likely, but yeah, Peter does what he does, so he tries to blame other people for this, I guess. So remember that this occurred in August, but now we are actually in October and we are at October 6th and the police has another press conference where they tell us that they have now found Kim's head. They found it in the water. They found a bag. So in, in this bag, Kim's head was, which is just horrible. It had been weighed down with metal, but the other parts of her body, like the torso, had also been weighed down with 
metal so that no one would ever find it or that it wouldn't like float up. They also found Kim's, some of Kim's clothes and her shoes. Now I don't really know if that was in the same bag or if that was in a separate bag, but I guess that it, that doesn't really matter. Just a quick side note, can you imagine how scary it would be if you would see like a head floating around? So freaking disgusting. So now that they had Kim's head, they could check if Peter was telling the truth or not. Because if she got the 70, uh, 17 kilos um, hash in her head, that would show up in the autopsy. But they could determine that no violence had been occurred to the head and it didn't even have any fracture or anything which just proves that peter he's a liar so later that same month peter confessed do you think he confessed to the murder nope he just confesses to dismembering her body and i tried so hard because i really wanted to know why he dismembered her body but I just couldn't really find any information about that. But he says that, he, so he now changes the story and says that she died because of carbine, oh my God, I can't, I can't say that. Carbon monoxide poisoning. So he says that he was taking some air or whatever, and then something, I don't know anything about submarines, but something in the submarine broke, or I don't know, something happened with the submarine that made her die from carbine monoxide poisoning. And later on in the trial, the um, judge that asked like, did you try and save her? And he was like, no, 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 I couldn't get to her. But he said that if he went down to her, he would also have died from that same poisoning. And they tried to make him look bad for that, but I can understand it. Like, if I know that I'm gonna die from that, then I wouldn't go down there either. So I can understand that. But then he says that, yeah, as I said, he dismembered her body and then just threw her body into the lake or the ocean, I mean. I don't get the dismembering part. I would love to know his re reason for dismembering her. That would be really interesting. Like, why would he dismember her? I, don't, I, I have no idea, but I don't know. So by this time, they had found all of the pieces of Kim's body. So they had found her legs and her arms as well, which was very nice for the family. Or nice, but you know what I mean. They were happy about that because that meant that they could bury their kid and their uh, girlfriend, and their friend, whole, so that they had all of the pieces of her body. That has to be very comforting to know that now you have all of the pieces, even though it's like devastating what happened to her. But they could not determine why she had died. They couldn't find a cause of death. The police never said why they couldn't figure out the cause of death, but I would assume that maybe it is because of the fact that she was in the water. When you put someone in water, you kind of ruin the body. So I would assume that that is why, but that is not information that I found. I didn't find any source saying that. That is just kind of my own speculation. So when they found the rest of Kim's body, they also found a saw. So we need to back up a little bit. So previous to this, people had seen this saw being carried by Peter. And they said that there was no reason for Peter to bring this saw onto the submarine. It had no purpose of being there and that they never had any sort of that tools on the submarine. So the only explanation that Peter's friends or the people that worked with Peter had was that they were building shelves for the submarine and that could be the reason, but they said that they were going to build the shelves in the um, workshop and that they then would bring the shelves to the submarine and not build them in the submarine. So they found that a little bit strange. But what the prosecution could argue now that they had found this saw, but then also that people had seen him carrying this saw previous to the murder, was that this was planned. So you kinda need to know this backstory that I'm going to mention right now, but I'm just gonna take this really, really quick. So previous to this, Peter had spent three years of his life trying to build a rocket because he wanted to be the first private person out in Spain. Space, not in Spain, in space. And there was this company that also tried to build a rocket and um, put a private person out, out in space as well. So he kind of raced this 
company like he wanted to beat them he wanted to be first because there was some sort of privilege in being first but obviously you need to apply for approval which the company and peter did on the same day so they applied for approval and they got notice that they were approved both of them were approved but they were also approved on the same day so one day prior to the um, submarine going out with him and kim he actually posted on his blog saying that he would let the company go out first. He basically gave them the opportunity to be first, uh, which made him feel very down, which made him feel very, very bad. Like he wanted to be first. He had worked on this for three years. He had devoted three years of his life for this, but then he couldn't be first. So that was very devastating for him. And maybe that was why this is just me speculating, but maybe that was why he took out some of his, his anger or something or his frustration on Kim. I don't really know, but I thought that that was kind of important for you to know as well. So I'm now just going to talk a little bit about the sexual assault. So if you don't want to listen to that, skip ahead. I'm just going to talk about it super quick and then... I'm done with it so I'm not gonna go to detail as I said in the beginning of the video but um, Peter is suspected of bounding Kim up and then using the saw or a knife to stab her in the genitals and then to stab her different places on her body so they say that she could have died from suffocation or uh, cuts to her neck they don't really know the cause of death you know, th this is just kind of speculation. I guess that they had evidence to support the binding up thing, but I just don't really have that information and I feel very uncomfortable doing research just about that certain things. I feel like that is just not something I need to know. It really doesn't really make me feel any better or so. so. I'm just gonna ignore that and then move on. So this is some of the most horrifying things that I've ever heard. You don't need to fast forward because it's nothing like that, but one hour after she had stepped foot on Nautilus, so the submarine, she texted her boyfriend and she says, I'm still alive, by the way. Knowing what we know now, horrible, horrible. She also texts to say that she loves him. During the trial, nothing new was really revealed. So the prosecution wants him away for life and the defender says that the death could be because of um, the carbine monoxide, carbon monoxide poisoning, which, you know, it's not, you can't really rule that out. You can't really prove why she or what she died from. So they have like two options how to convict him. They could convict him because he was going to get convicted because he did throw a body into the lake or into the ocean, which is, um, I don't know what the law is specifically called in English, but it is that he destroyed a body so that he would get four months for, and he had already been serving that or he would get life for the death of Kim or for the murder of Kim I mean so Peter actually got life in prison thank god like oh if you imagine if he had walked free Peter still denies having killed Kim and he did appeal they didn't change his sentence like he didn't walk and now he has one more chance to appeal but he is not gonna do that and he hasn't done that so i think that that says a lot actually but i do also know that if i look at my analytics most of the people that watch me are american and something that i do want to say is that life in prison this is obviously in denmark he was sentenced in denmark um but life in prison in both Sweden and Denmark is not life. In the US, they have much harsher sentences than we have. So when you have served for 12 years, they will let you know that, okay, you need to serve 10 more years or you need to serve two more years or you need to serve yada, yada, yada. But on average, it's the same in Sweden and in Denmark, on average, they serve 16 years. This doesn't mean that Peter will serve 16 years. This just means that if we're just gonna go on this st statistic, 
This means that Peter will serve 16 years for murdering her, sexually assaulting her, dismembering her body, and just giving a bunch of different excuses for everything, like changing his story every single time, which is just... That is crazy. So I just went off camera to let my hair down and put on some lipstick because it's kind of hard to talk when doing that. That was actually all that I had for today. I feel like I did a little bit better this time than I did last time, but that is, uh, I had a lot of difficulties. Like this video if you like these kinds of videos. If you don't like them, please thumbs this video down. It really helps me out to know what you like and what you don't like. And if you have criticism for me, I, would love to get some criticism how to make this better or what I can improve on because I am not afraid to criticism. I'm just, I don't want you to be rude and just say like, oh my God, you suck. Well, that is not gonna help me. But if you say like, you know, I think you should do this instead or this instead, then I would happily listen to it and I, I love criticism, like I love feedback from you guys, whether it's good or bad. So just wanted to say that, but I am going to, uh, give some attention to Siggy right now and take him out for a walk. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.